Hello, fly tires. I'm Matt. Welcome back. Now, as a fly tire with a YouTube channel, I do watch a lot of the other fly tires channels out there. And one thing I've noticed that most of them have done that I never have is give you a tour of my, you know, setup, my bench, how I have everything organized and arranged. So I thought I would do that today. So I'm making a quick video, just an unscripted quick tour of my bench and how I have everything set up. Maybe you'll be able to get some tips from this that could help you. Hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. Okay, here we are my friends. A quick tour of my fly tying room and setup. Pretty much unscripted. I'm just going to walk through, casually talk about it. Um, there's the entry where I come in. This room is just an office space kind of in my basement. You see uh, I've got a chair over here or a couch like with two cats on it. Everybody needs cats when their time flies. I've got a bookshelf over here, a map of Maryland with the trout streams highlighted. Got a little TV over here where I can watch videos while I sit on the couch. Another bookshelf with some miscellaneous books over here. Now this is my main computer right here where I do my video editing and just playing around with all my stuff. So kind of my, my main desk right there. A couple of my most recent books that I'm going through, might be doing reviews on these soon. This is probably my main bookshelf right here. Mostly fly tying books and magazines. Uh, some of the giveaway stuff down here. Got the Montana Mongoose Vice. It's gonna be in December. Then some golden pheasant skins right there. We're gonna do a series on those as soon as we finish the ringneck pheasant skins. So now over here to this side, got a dry erase board. I try to schedule out the flies at the beginning of the month and plan what I'm gonna do for the rest of the month. Another computer and a couple monitors here. This is my daytime work at home, you know, for my regular job during the pandemic. I do a lot of work from home. Oh yeah, Thomas mentioned, asked if I'd ever made a shadow box. So if anybody out there is considering making a shadow box for your flies, you know, send me an email. I can tell you how I made that one. It turned out okay. I've got a, I don't know what this is called, just a, a little caddy with, with drawers in it. You know, I keep various hooks in here. I've got most of my threads, the primarily 70 denier that I use most of over here, but I've got some other miscellaneous threads and spooled materials here. You know, the wires and the weight, uh, the vinyl rib and any kind of tinsel and spooled floss over here. Now, let's look at this wall. Back up, this is probably my main wall right here. Cork board with just miscellaneous furs and some bird skins that aren't really bagged and I can't peg and hang up. Just you see some rabbits, some fox. A lot of these folks have given me, there's a mink that Lee gave me. There's a patch of bear that Michael from West Virginia sent to me. And then some various, you know, deer tail, fox fur, fox cape or face right there. Some possums, squirrel tails, fox tails, raccoon, a coyote there. But this is probably the most convenient you know, part of my setup is this pegboard. It's a three feet by two feet uh, piece of pegboard I got from Home Depot with some two by two um, frame behind it. So it stands off from the wall a little bit. And I've kind of arranged it with, you know, by types. So you have some dry fly hackle up here, go over here, some wet fly hackle, other type hackle, and then some bird skins over there. Miscellaneous birds with some, you know, duck, turkey and goose, all that. Then a lot of my most commonly used, um, you know, furs, deer and elk and, and those type hairs. We've got some rabbit stuff in here and then some synthetics down here with chenilles and, and other kinds of dubbing. I've got, um, these are my most, most used dubbing blends over here. It looks like I've got 12 containers of those. I've also got more dubbing down below, the homemade DIY dubbing and those plastic totes. This is a book, usually the book I'm working out of at the time I sit over here. See some dyes right there. I've never dyed materials, but I'm going to pretty soon. I've got a couple of containers with, of totes like with drawers over here. You see some, some glass beads right there, some empty dubbing containers, some pheasant you know, tails right there, and just other miscellaneous stuff. Most of my hooks are in these drawers right here. There's some in the one behind me, but uh, I keep them right here as well. Now for the main part of the bench. This is, you know, you can't really tell in my videos, but it's a little, kind of a little bit messy. When I'm tying this whole area over here to the left, it's probably got all kinds of feathers and furs on it. 
You can see I've got the camcorder about five inches in front of my Regal Revolution vise. You can see the screen on the background behind it. That is, you know, real time what I'm looking at while I record. I've got the blue backdrop right behind it, which I spin it around when I'm taking the thumbnail photo for it. But you can tell it's, it, when you're making a video, you're a little bit restrictive in what you can kind of do. That's why I don't use the rotary function all that often. Well, let's mention the lights. So I, I do, when I'm recording, I need an external light right there on the fly. And I also have, this is my main tying light. And this is just a, a utility light from my chicken brooder. It's hanging from the ceiling by its own cord over there to the corner and drops down and plugged in right there. This other light with the barn doors on it, that's for when I'm filming the talking head part, as is this big light over here. You can see the tripod back there. No camera on it because I'm using that camera right now, but that's what I film the, the talking head part. So let's talk about the other things I use here on my bench. Oh, one, one other mention is, let's see, I have, you know, other totes down here, miscellaneous feathers and furs, got some foam, some uh, fly boxes over here, and just miscellaneous tools. But let's see, over here, I use a foam caddy right there for most of my tools. Got that small little round foam right there, and then a hairline dubbin bead pad. But one of the most convenient things I have that I've ever got are these condiment containers. About a hundred of these with lids is maybe seven or eight dollars. And it's so convenient because you can put hooks and beads and flies and anything else that would just make a mess on your desk. You can keep them in here. And then when I tie up a dozen flies, I will just take a, you know, a Sharpie and write what size it is on it. Here's size 18 and 20, CDC elk hair caddises. So a dozen each of those, they'll go in my fly box, you know, next time I need to replenish my fly box. But this thing, see this little tray right here? It is hackle pliers. I think it came with 10 hackle pliers in a cool little fold-out tray, but I use it more often, more often to just, you know, hold the flies while they're drying or if I want to look at them and while I'm experimenting. But yeah, that's a, a very convenient tool. I've, I've gotten a lot of use out of that. Now, I also use a mouse pad here. I know a lot of you probably don't have a need for a mouse pad, but these are the tools that I'm using for the current fly I'm tying. And it's just because when I'm filming, if I need to sit the the scissors back down, it's not so loud to sit them on that pad than it would be to sit them on this hard surface right here. Now, oh, one other thing worth mentioning is this. It's just a five little junction outlet box where I can turn off all my lights at one time. So we'll back up a second. The, the main light is number one right there. If I turn that off and on right there, now I can turn on these other lights, the big filming light, you know, the barn door light there, you know, Christmas tree lights behind me. Could turn off all these. So having this thing is very convenient. If you are fortunate enough to have, you know, a permanent tying station where you can set up your bench and have various lights like that. So I think that covers pretty much my tying area right here. Oh, I've got a few other miscellaneous bags of, of feathers and furs hanging from corks over here. That is one thing I will do, you know, a Ziploc bag. If I've harvested a possum, this one was January, 2020, I'll put the, the fur in a bag and just label it from when I, you know, got it. Because most of you know, a possum or a raccoon that you harvest in January is gonna have much different fur from one you've got in, you know, July. So that's it, my friends. I hope uh, this was helpful for you to see how I set up my bench and maybe it will give some of you ideas on how to do yours. So that's all, my friends. Take care. We'll see you next time.